Week five in Survivor Pools was scary, but not deadly for participants. We'll go back and take a look at what happened in week five and give you some solid week six picks, hopefully without a heart attack. All coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Gary Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. Week five, man, there were a couple of just, woo, down to the last second games, including a record-tying 63-yard field goal by Graham Gano. Man, Eric, that was exciting. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was inc- it was incredible. I, I really love the NFL, and I love the excitement of a really good NFL game. We had overtime games. It was just another great week, and this will go down to the top ten uh, moment for me, just as far as excitement of a game. 63 yards as time uh, expires, and it was heavily important in survivor pools. I'll tell you who really liked that kick, Eric, who really liked that kick. Joshua Rinker and Carolyn McGrath. Congratulations. That was Graham Godot's gift from him to you. Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. Rosh Hashanah, Hanukkah, and whatever. If, and if you're a new viewer, you may not know what we're talking about. We have had a survivor pool for, with our viewers from the very beginning. Uh, I think we start off with like 45. We only have four left. Two of those folks uh, put their survivor life on Carolina, and they whew, barely survived. Eked it out. The two other folks, uh, they were sitting pretty. They listened to us. We said that New England over Indy was a lock. And at one point in time, I think they were up uh, by 30 points. So there you go. Corey McGrath and Elizabeth Intertos, congratulations. You rested easy. All four of you moving on to the next round. And the next round is week six. We'll look at the four highest favorites of people you should be considering if you are playing survivor pools. They are, first, Minnesota at home, 10.5 point favorites against Arizona. Green Bay is also at home, 9.5 over San Francisco. Houston at home, eight and a half over Buffalo, yep. and the LA Rams travel to Denver, and they're t- and they're a touchdown point favorite. Gary, of those four games, we'll start with this. Is there any one which you think you know what you want to stay away from? Uh, Green Bay and Minnesota, because I've already picked them. <laughs> so now I'm down to two. <laughs> so, <laughs> too bad. Some of those are good games, but yeah. uh, you know I, I'm going to stay away from Houston versus Buffalo because. Well, because, frankly, and I'm as guilty and as surprised as anyone by this, Buffalo is actually having a tiny bit of a mini resurgence. I wouldn't take that (laughs) too far, but I will say they're 2-1 and in the last three games, and they've been doing it by featuring a suddenly potent running game, featuring LaShawn McCoy and Chris Ivory. They've rushed for over 100 yards on average in the last three games. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the defense, the same defense that uh, catapulted them to a surprise playoff spot last year, has uh, come to light here in the last three games. And Eric, it, it's it's hard to be an eight and a half point favorite over a team that's been two and one in the last three games. And quite frankly, Houston is injured. You got Deshaun Watson, he may play, but he's talking about chest pains. Will Fuller obviously isn't 100%, because uh, if he was, you wouldn't see nearly as much as uh, Kiki Kuti as you did in the last couple of games. Um, Eric, it just it doesn't feel nearly as comfortable as eight and a half would suggest. Yeah, and Buffalo fans are pumped. I mean, they're now they went from everyone thinking they were the worst team in the league to the fact that they were are now two and three, and literally only one game out of the league. Some of them yeah, are even talking shocking. playoffs. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? Yeah, uh, yes. I'm siding with Mora on this one. They are not getting anywhere near the, the playoffs. Uh, but anyway, it's nice to see that uh, that they've come back a little bit. Um, Gary, the, the, the game that I am going to completely stay away from, even though I could pick them, is the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the deal. They play Arizona. Arizona's big weakness is the run defense, but that's the one thing that Minnesota hasn't been able to do. No. Um, uh, partially because of the Dalvin Cook uh, injury, Latavius Murray hasn't uh, done really well, and even Dalvin Cook hasn't really done no, neither one of them, frankly, as well. Yeah. But even more than that, when you play survivor pools, here's a major tip for you guys: you've got to look at the future value. And when you look at the uh, week nine now, and that's not that far away. 
it is a really hard survivor pool week. Uh, and the best game to pick that week is Minnesota. They host Detroit. So I'm saving Minnesota for that particular week. And as a tip, if you pick Chicago already, which I did, you definitely want to save Minnesota because Chicago is one of the only other good games that particular week. An excellent tip and a, a good point to look ahead for future value. We talked about that before. Um, speaking of future value, I've been saving the Rams. <laughs> Finally, I get my chance to use them. I don't actually know that this is the absolute best game of the season to use the Rams, but I've picked all the other teams before, and this one is a virtual lock, folks. I mean, look, the Rams, seven and a half. I know they're going to mile high. Seven is a lot to give on the road. Um, how many times have I said this? The Rams are so far and away the best team in football. They're top six in offense, top six in defense. No other team can say that. Um, Denver, by the way, is bottom 10 offense and bottom 10 defense, just to make the point. It's the, disappointing. Those two teams are, you know, Denver's kind of floundering in that sub-500 range, and you know, the Rams are just skyrocketing. Now, I grant you that the Rams are injured. However, having said that, gee, McVay seems to think that both um, uh, Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup are going to play this week. They had concussions. Um, so that's good news for the Rams. And second of all, you can run roughshod over the Denver Broncos. Gee, just ask the Kansas City Chiefs and, uh, and now the New York Jets. And, you know, Todd, that Todd Gurley guy is pretty good. Yeah. I, I got a pretty good feeling about him. Slightly. Yeah. I'll take the Rams. Yeah. I understand the I understand the pick. If you have used some of these other teams and you need to go and you're afraid of that Houston game because of Deshaun Watson, that makes uh, a lot of sense because the Rams should win. You usually hate picking a team that's going on the road, uh, but uh, I, I hear you. So um, let's talk about our experts panel. So if you're new to the channel, just FYI, we put together kind of mockingly, <laughs> an experts panel uh, with Gary and me. Um, and we have a couple of people joining us. First of all, so uh, my pick this week uh, was the Green Bay Packers, and Gary is picking uh, the L.A. Rams. Yep. Um, the third and fourth members of the, the panel uh, is a 12-year-old whiz kid, Michael. And Michael selects the Houston Texans. He's Texans. He says, I don't care about Deshaun Watson being hurt. The Texans are going to beat Buffalo. Now it's time to, to, uh, to take a look at our YouTube superstar, Coco. Four million dollar viewing dog. Four million views, yeah. And uh, let's see who his selection is. All right, so that will wrap up all our expert panel picks. We've got, uh, wow, the Packers, the Rams, the uh, Vikings, and Houston. Yeah, they're it's all a different. Rainbow coalition of the different teams that are supported go. by our experts. So there you go. Hopefully, one of us is right. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So all right, with that, uh, let's turn it over to one of my favorite segments. So, Gary, there's a lot of, a couple of mailbags we want to talk about. One really quickly I thought was kind of funny from Juan Lopez. Juan just wrote to us. Juan Lopez. Why okay. is Gary the only one that gets to talk? Eric, can I have a representative? Now, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Basically, what Juan is telling you, Gary. Ah, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Is that because I missed your survivor pick earlier? Is that because I injured you in some way? Oh. I don't know, Eric. Do we? Uh, well, first of all, I, you know, you probably want to hear from me because I'm better looking. Right? All so right. That? Time to move on. When Gary gets passionate about something, he definitely will give his opinion. I gesticulate. So, I give my opinion. So Thank we, you for pointing that out, Juan. I want to hear your opinion on this from uh, Kelly St. Pierre wrote to us and said, Kelly? Um, actually responding to a comment that you made in a previous video. Uh-oh. What'd I say? Uh, he's, 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 you, were, you were talking about how good Jared Goff is. It's possible MVP after four weeks. She says, I know Goff is having uh -huh. a terrific season, but Pat Mahomes is having a record-breaking season. He is. To me, he is the MVP at this point. 
So this was done before week five's games. But as we sit here in week five, what are your thoughts between Mahomes and uh, Goff? Well, uh, very fair point by Kelly. Great observation, first of all. Um, I probably was a little premature, frankly, in saying that. I think Goff is an MVP well, candidate. He's having uh, an incredible Go- season. Goff is having a, a, a great year. I think it's pretty much right down the middle between the, the two. I think Mahomes has been more of a surprise. Um, but if I were, a rookie, yeah. but if I were to predict at the end of the year who I think will have the better year between uh, Jared Goff and Pat Mahomes, I think I would uh, lean to Jared Goff. Uh, I, I he got to have his, his receivers have to um, have to get healthier, um, and that's going to have to happen. But I look at the distribution and touchdowns. I think the Rams have been had a higher percentage than I think I can expect for rushing touchdowns, where Kansas City has had a higher than expected in passing touchdowns. I think that will revert a little bit more to the mean. Yeah, I, and I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. I what I did you, I, did you I hear all I, did you hear all that one? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I talk about it? <laughs> so I, I almost think it's we're we're developing a little bit of a false paradigm here because we're forgetting about a few people that I think really deserve recognition. Okay. And that is First of all, Matt Ryan and Drew Brees, because yeah. statistically speaking, Matt Ryan and Drew Brees are having just about the same year that Jared Goff and Pat Mahomes are having. Um, do you think fact, they will you, continue, though? I, you, I think you, they are easily as good a bet to continue as Pat Mahomes and probably a little better because they've done it before. Mm-hmm. All the names we've mentioned have done it before except for Pat Mahomes, not his fault he's a rookie. right? But the reality is this. There are also a couple of other guys who are absolutely in leagues by themselves at their own positions. We're talking Todd Gurley of the Rams. We're talking Adam Thielen of the Vikings. Why do I mention those two? Because, and admittedly, I'm kind of veering away from the NFL going to fantasy here, but we are a fantasy show after all. Those guys have literally 10% more fantasy points, Eric, than the next highest person on the list as opposed to all the quarterbacks we've named who are all within a few points of each other and have other quarterbacks that are within a few points of that. Nobody in the last 10 years has ever finished 10% or more higher at their position. Anybody. So if either of those two can sustain it, but that's oh, the man. I, I hope they garner some. But different that's people. the question, Gary. Do you think those two guys will sustain it? Oh, it's I, one thing to say where we are now, but if you were to project out, who do you think is your MVP? Honestly, um, Adam Thielen is is uh, at this point his fantasy points are more um, yardage and reception dependent than touchdown dependent. Um, so be, you know, face it, he's gotten over 100 yards in each of the five games. Yeah. Um, I actually think that that is at least marginally, if not mostly, sustainable. Now, can anybody average more than 100 yards per game? Probably not. But my point is this. He's not living off of one or two touchdowns every game. He's living off of receptions and yards, and he will always have a great quarterback, and he will always you know, himself be the number one receiver. I think that's sustainable. And Todd Gurley just had an MVP season two years ago, so you know that's sustainable. All right, but you got to pick a, one guy, uh, and my guy would be Todd Gurley. Now, if you tell me the biggest surprise is Adam Thielen. I mean, look where Adam Thielen went in the draft versus Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley was the, the first overall. But, um, again, it all based on the fact that I have a lot of confidence in that L.A. Rams team. I think they're the best team in the NFL. And Absolutely. I think that they're going to continue to lean on him. Yeah, I mean, if I had to predict who's going to be the NFL MVP, it'd be Jared Goff. Because they almost always vote quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, he's, well. he, he's probably a little more sustainable than Pat Mahomes right. for a couple of reasons. One you just mentioned. But uh, let me put one more thing out there. Okay. Will you make it quick? <laughs> All right. Sorry, Juan. The, uh, Pat Mahomes and Jared Goff are responsible for 72% of their team's offense. The other two quarterbacks I mentioned that are having just about as good of seasons, Matt Ryan and Drew Brees, are responsible for 77% of their team's offense. So when you talk about most valuable... Man, I hope those guys don't fall out of the conversation because they truly are as valuable or more to their team well, as the previous guys I, are theirs. What I would like to see you guys do is actually enter in the comments who you think the MVP will be by the end of the year, in your opinion. Uh, we really appreciate all the feedback and the and engagement that we've had on this channel, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit the red button to subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of our future shows. And until the next show, we'll see you next time. See you next time.